the focus of this masterclass is on um, high fashion braiding um, styling. Uh, the reason why I wanted to do this uh, session, because especially if you're someone who may be, because for the last few months, I have worked with a lot of people who work in film and TV and those who work in uh, the fashion industry as well. So there's always different trends coming up with different ways to style hair and to make the hair look more edgy and taking something that is quite simple as canaries or braids or plaits plaits, whatever you call it, and transitioning into something more editorial, something more um, extraordinary than what it generally might look like. So I thought this would be a good chance to just show some tips on how you could essentially use your um, braiding techniques and especially where we use a lot of extension. So as someone who works a lot with Afro and multi-textured hair, with your Afro hair, most of the time the hair is not as long as you might want it to be. And we know the texture is more kinky coiled hair texture. So we're always having to essentially rely on using hair extensions just to enhance the look that we're going for. So if you in a position where you likely might work with someone with um, Afro hair texture, you notice that the hair tends to be a bit more shorter. So you will have to learn how to use hair extensions. So I do have a few images that I looked at on, um, on some of the ideas, just to give you an idea of what I mean when I'm referencing um, fashion braiding. So when you look at things like the catwalk and you look at films and you look at uh, magazines, they will have these type of uh, braids that are done in a more simple way, but essentially still looks quite editorial in the finish and how it looks as well. So essentially we're going to aim to take something that is quite simple and transition it into some of these looks that you might come across here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to share some some images one here so this was um a fashion show i can't remember the designer but the i want to say alexander mcqueen because i know i looked at quite a few different ones by alexander mcqueen what they had on some of their catwalk shows i mean this is quite simple so it's just the two braids but the fact that the hazel is slicked and it's styled on the sides this is very simple braid work and again this wouldn't be anything that requires a lot of time to do as well um, there are some more here that might take a little bit more time, but essentially most of them, they're pretty much braids that can easily be done within like 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the hair that you're working with and how fast you work as a stylist as well. And this was this was an part of an Alexander McQueen fashion. So this method of braiding here, so something like this, this is quite a simple braid. So if I was doing like a weave extension for a client, the method that they've actually used here where it's all braided into a circle would actually be a base for a weak application or weave application. But again, we can see that can be translated onto um, a look that might be seen on the catwalk where you just, by just adding those simple lines, those two sections at the front there with the hair left out, it already enhances the look as well. And then obviously the overall look with the makeup and the clothes will add to the effect of the style as well. So the braid doesn't have to be anything complicated. It can be very simple, but it's just the case of how the hair is actually dressed will determine how the finished result would actually look. Um, another one that I have here that I really like was this one. Again, this was from Alexander McQueen. So this we can see they've combined the fishtail braiding technique to create this look here. So just by doing the I think there's about six or seven plaits in there. And then it's just the case of just styling the hair. So it's all about how you dress and you style the hair and also the accessories that you put in there. And sometimes making the braid itself not super neat and intentionally giving it like a messy type of look will also enhance the look of the style. Um, this one again is a fishtail braid. And this would have been hair that's braided. So this would actually be extension that is pre-braided. And then the, the model's hair would be smoothed into the bun in the middle and pinned away. And then all you would have to do is to pin the hair onto the, the model's head and then shaping and designing the, the shape that you see in the braid that they did there. So you could essentially do maybe three or four big fishtail braids 
and then you just pin them into the hair. So this would be something where you would have done the prep beforehand with the braiding. And then if it's a case of you're doing the styling, this will take maybe 15 to 20 minutes to actually apply and do the style. So it depends on what environment you work in. So if you're working in an environment where you're not given enough time to really do a lot on the hair, these would be quite simple styles that you could potentially do on the hair. So I'm actually going to be doing something similar to this one here. So, um, I like this one because there's quite a contrast going on here with a combination of uh, different braiding method. So the big braid there, it's almost got like a, a knot, like a knotted braid effect going through there. Essentially, you could transition this. You could do this with a fishtail finish, or you could do this as a three-way plait and slightly pulled through. But I like what they've done with the smaller ones where you have a slightly smaller braid and it starts off nice and narrow and thin at the beginning and then it goes a little bit wider. And then you've got a slightly medium, bigger size braid plait there on the side and then the rest of the hair left out. So just by doing simple sectioning techniques, whether you're doing slightly smaller sections with one line and then slightly bigger with the next, it also enhances the look and it adds to to the drum, to the dramatic effect, if you like, of how um, the style is finished as well. So um, let me see. Uh, I wish I could just share this all at once without going in and out of it. Um, so this one, I really liked this one. So again, this would probably take a little bit more time to do this one. So this is a combination of a three-way braid with the side, with a smaller one there on the side, and then you have the bigger section there. So the first one underneath would have been done as a fishtail plait. So essentially they've combined the fishtail plait and one of them is pulled out a little bit more than the other. And then this, the one that's sort of sitting in the middle there is slightly pulled out as well, but because they've left it with a slightly kind of um, like a messy type of uh, texture there where the hair is sticking out, it creates a little bit more of a nice finish to the style and just having the, the hair left out on the sides there that also adds to the look. So there's different ways they can play around with simple braid techniques, but it's just the case of how you dress it, whether you slightly pull on the hair, where you intentionally leave more like a messy type of finish on the braid and then you pin it in. And also adding accessories like they've done there with the pins on the side there, that also adds to the dramatic effect of the style so again is you just have to kind of think think outside the box when you're doing your styling with your braiding so this one this is something that you will probably see more on the catwalk i've seen this look quite quite a lot on the catwalk so this is all like a cage type of braid so again it's simple braiding and then it's just the case of how you dress the hair how you position it as well and the part where they left some of the hair out joining onto the next um Hair extension is similar to a technique that we call a uh, tree braid. So tree braid is when you're braiding down the hair and then you intentionally pull out small sections that you actually leave out. So it almost looks like a branch on a braid, um, but that would be the method and the technique they would actually use to leave out that hair there and then you join it onto the next line. So, um, I mean, there's so many, the, the possibilities are endless. There's so much you could actually do when it comes to braiding. And then these ones, I um, think this is from that TV program. I can't remember the name of the program, the one with the Vikings in it. Um, I think it's on Netflix and everywhere else. But yeah, so with this one again, it's just a case of they've combined a slight twisting in the hair and then braiding the hair as well. And then the dressing where they've sectioned out panels there that are wrapped around with almost this like a leather type binding around the hair there. So again, you can take something quite simple and then just make it look a bit more dramatic. And this would be something that doesn't even take a very long time to do, but it's just the way that we dress it that will just make it look more like it's something that really took a very long time to do as well. Um, another one that is like a Viking inspired type of braid is uh, this one here. So with this one, again, we have a combination of a fishtail braid that is very loosely pulled out to create that kind of effect that you can see in the middle with the slightly larger plait there. And then you've got the slightly smaller ones again on the side. So if you're working with someone with slightly shorter hair, 
you would have to rely on using your hair extension to create this type of look and this type of result in the hair as well. Unless the person has got really long hair, then you wouldn't necessarily have to use extension. But also using extension can also enhance the look and add maybe color. You could be the reason why you're adding extension in there for color. Uh, to contrast whatever the person's own natural color might be as well. So this one here is going to be my first loop, like I mentioned before, that I'm going to create on my training head. And then um, the second look I will decide as we go, okay? So what I, what I will be using is my, um, I have quite a lot of hair extension that I've been using and I've got some prepared from a session that I did before. So I always try to repurpose the hair that I work with because uh, some hair you don't always have to throw it away after you've used it. So I have, um, as always, I always tend to have quite bright colors or if I was going to create something more like a natural turn, it will still have more like a blend of maybe two or four different colors that are quite natural. Now with this one, this is quite bright colors that I have here. So this is a blend of, um, I think these are like six different color tones that are mixed in to create this overall look that you can see on here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, I won't have time to show you how I actually created the blending. But I have done, uh, I think I did a video on my Instagram on, um, when did I do that? I think I did that in February. I think I did a set, um, a vid, uh, it was like an hour, less than an hour session on uh, working with synthetic hair. And I covered how to prepare your hair extension, how to blend the hair as well which if anyone's interested to know, they can watch it on there. So this hair extension that I'm using, this is um, called Expression Hair. So the brand is called Expressions and you can order it from Pax Cosmetics or um, any hair and beauty shop that supplies products for Afro hair texture and braiding hair and weaving hair for Afro hair texture. You will find that brand. And what I tend to do is I'll buy like a whole different type blend of colors. So they normally come in just one color, which would be either red, blue, pink, whatever the color you want to pick. So I tend to buy all the colors they have on the spectrum. And then what I'll do is I'll pick out a few different colors that I want to mix. And then um, I mix them and combine them to create my own tones that I want to work with. So, um, so yeah, this is what I'll be using. So with this hair, it's already feathered because when you work with this hair, you want to make sure that it's nice and feathered and you don't want to work with it where it's really sharp and blunt because it won't really hold. So this is the first color tones that I'm using for um, the look that we're creating and I'm doing it on this training head here. So with this training head, it's already been um, shampooed, conditioned and I blow dried it on the hair. Um, what I use is, if I was doing this with someone with Afro hair texture, I would, you would want to make sure that the hair is shampooed and it's clean and it's been shampooed, conditioned and blow dried. You want to make sure you apply moisturizing product on the hair. So um, good moisturizing product to use could be Keracare Conditioning Cream Hair Dress. It's a moisturizing product that can be used for blow drying and it's a product that can also be applied while you're doing your braiding on the hair as well. And you definitely also want to have some type of glaze, which is similar to like an edge control. It helps to control the hair and smooth the hair and allows you to have a really nice clean sections and clean um, plaits when they're fully done. So I tend to use either the Gummy Professional, uh, which I need to get more because my one is pretty much almost out from here. So um, this is the brand, it's called Gummy Professional. You can look it up. You should be able to order this online or any of the hair shops. The same place where you would likely buy your hair extension, you should be able to find any of the products that I'm talking about. If you don't find the Gummy, the other one that I would use is the Keracare uh, Edge Control. And it's just called Keracare Edge Tamer. That's the product here that you can see there. And I would also have a gel. So this is a styling frizz gel that I might use on the hair. But be mindful that if you use anything that is like a gel straight onto Afro hair that you blow dried, 
it can cause the hair to revert back and go kinky. So I would base the hair first with the glaze. And then if I need to use the gel, that will go on top of that as well. Um, I also have this uh, sheer butter by um, Phyto Specific. This is just to add a bit of shine and to, again, moisturize the hair. So if I didn't have the Kara Care hairdress, I would use this on the hair as well. And then I just have this uh, Talia Wajid Natural Serum. It's a blend of oils. I would use this just to smooth the hair and also add a little bit of shine on the person's actual hair and also on my hair extension as well, okay? So I am just going to get started with the sectioning here. So remember the look that we had is slightly curved in around here and the focus of braiding is around the middle section here. And then we had this hair smooth down and then it finishes off with like a ponytail. So because this hair is not like long, as you can see, I would actually have to create the finish and the effect in there. So I'm actually going to use that image that we looked at um, with the braids, but I'll use that as my guideline, but I'll also work and design something that suits the hair that I'm working with, keeping in mind, I don't have like a whole lot of length on the hair as well. So first thing I always recommend that if you're going to do any form of braiding, you want to make sure that you have a pin tail comb that you use for your sectioning because that is the best way to be able to do your sections nice and clean is to use a pin tail comb. So with the training heads, some of the stitching of the hair placement is not the best to really get that really nice straight lines going through there. But again, if you're going to practice this on a training head, just try your best to get the sections as nice and clean as you can get them, okay? And also, I would eventually I'm going to use the glaze to help me to smooth the hair a little bit because it helps to control the hair, especially if the hair is a little bit fly away, then the glaze will help us with that process, okay? Um, right, okay, so I'm just roughly sectioning this out a little bit. So you can see just there, on the sides, I've got my sections there. So you really want to accentuate the curves if you really want the style to stand out based on what we're looking at there. You really want to make sure that you really go in and create the right curve that will allow you to see the shape of the cane row when it's actually done. So if, you, if you're if you maybe not too familiar with like braiding or doing cane rows with extensions, um, again, you can, I've got a video on braiding and cane row for beginners on my YouTube channel, which you can watch. And then once you learn how to do the methods and the techniques, then you can give this a try. Okay. So I'll just section this out of the way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my glaze. So the glaze, I use it as I'm doing my sectioning. So this is kind of like what it looks like. So it is quite sticky and it can be very heavy. So ideally this, you only want to use it on somebody who's got Afro hair texture. I wouldn't use this on someone with um, Caucasian hair because this will make the hair very oily and we don't want that to happen to the hair. So. If you're going to do this on um, Caucasian hair, I would recommend that you be using more like your gel because the gel will help you to control the hair a little bit more. Um, but this type of product will only work best for your Afro hair textures for that. Okay, unless maybe you have a wax, a very light wax type of product that you normally use on uh, Caucasian hair or Asian hair textures, then you can also use that instead of this one here. Okay. So I'm just going through and just making that section a little bit more neater. So with the first line here that I'm going to do, I'm going to intentionally make that nice and small. And I'm not going to put any extension on this section here, but on the next one that I'll do after this one, that's when I'm going to go in and put some extension in that one as well. So again, I use, I section out and then I use a little bit of the glaze in between that section because the glaze helps you to really get a little bit more cleaner 
line of sectioning there. Okay, so this really stands out more on someone with um, on someone's actual hair when you're actually doing this than on the training head. So the training head, most of the Afro training heads that we have available, the hair texture is not actually Afro hair texture. So it wouldn't really perform like you would actually see when you actually do this on someone with Afro hair, but they're great to use for practicing on anyway. So the hair texture is more like, um, it's more almost like a type 3A hair texture. That's a little bit more uh, closer to, um, more Caucasian hair texture with a slight kinkiness to it, to be honest. So it's not really super Afro, but we'll still use it for what we need. So what I'm just doing now is with the glaze, you always want to apply more from the roots and just slightly further up the hair. We're not going to put it all the way through the hair because it does get sticky. So we don't want that to happen to the hair. So you want to make sure that with a glaze, you only apply it towards the roots and then you just either use your comb your pintail comb to just slightly comb the hair and then you'll, you'll be able to get that further up on the hair but we don't want it all the way to the ends and what i've also done is with my sectioning here i've intentionally started off with a very small amount to make sure that starts off a little bit narrow and then it will go slightly wider again this is something that i've covered when i did my when i did the class on braiding um, and cane rest for beginners to show you how you can essentially create that section where it starts off really, really thin and then it graduates into a slightly wider section. So um, I won't spend too much time going over that right now, um, but there is video available for anyone who wants to watch how to do that, okay? And I also taught on how to position your hands when you're doing your cane row. So this will be done super quick because, you know, time goes so fast and before we know it, it's like, okay, it's time to finish. So. I want to make sure that I actually do a complete look, including like accessories and everything else. Because sometimes the time goes so quick, so I don't have time to actually show how to, how I would have placed the, any accessories that I put in the hair, okay? So again, I'm just curving slightly around the head there with my cane row, okay? Um, so what I would do is I would do the small ones first. So you want to do the small ones first because they essentially create the guide for where you might want to place the, the next ones. So I will do the small ones both on both sides. And then after I'll go back in and do the slightly lower one here, again, both on both sides of the head. And then I'll finish off with the bigger one that sits there in the middle. So roughly where this kind of stopped, this is where we essentially going to place our hair to make uh, the ponytail attachment there. So I'll just slightly curve that in, just slightly for the shape that we want. And I'll just go to this side again. I apply a little bit more of my glaze on the hair there. So the glaze does really help you when you need to do your sectioning and plait the hair. So this is why it's important to make sure the person's hair is clean before you start applying any glaze because if the hair is not clean and it's got build up of products from anything that they might have put in their hair before, then you're going to end up with like a white type of film type of thing sitting on the hair where it just looks unclean. So you, you want to make sure that wherever you're working, get the person to make, to come to you when the hair is freshly shampooed. If you're not based in the salon, or you're working in film and TV where you're not able to actually shampoo someone's hair before you do their hair for them, make sure their hair is clean before they come to you. And they shouldn't put any other products on the hair apart from like shampoo, condition, and just slightly moisturize, possibly use like a spray leave-in conditioner because you are going to be applying more products on the hair for them. So you don't want the risk of someone coming to you and they've shampooed and conditioned their hair, but they've gone and applied a whole lot of um, heavy and oily products on there. So you don't want that to happen, okay? Um, <laughs> I just forgot, I actually don't have hair on my head. I'm so used to sticking the comb in on my hair to hold it. I was just, yeah, anyway, you, you probably couldn't see it because the camera is down. But, um, so if you guys just let me know what areas 
you're based in in terms of like whether you work in uh in film you're working in salons or work in tv in tv maybe commercial maybe you work in fashion i don't know so i have an idea of what you guys do because i always like to know like whoever i'm teaching are they based in what industry are they based in so you can just type that in the chat and then i'll go through and just see what you guys say okay and if anyone's got any question as i'm going through this you can type that in because when i finish um this look i'll go in and then check we'll go over any questions you might have okay Okay, so again with this, um, the tension that we put in our fingers when we do our plaiting is the key to achieving a really good finish on your cane row. So if you do cane rows or braiding and you don't apply enough tension, your cane row would never look as neat and as tight as you essentially want it to be because you don't want it to be loose, you want it to be nice and tight not to the point of where it's painful, but tight enough that it holds well and it doesn't come undone. Right, okay, so. Can see the braid there that we have on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and put my second one on either side of the head here. Okay, so the second one is going to be a little bit more bigger than the last one that we did. So what I might do is, I might do this whole section here at the front there in a intentionally larger braid so that all, all the hair in the back here is going to be smoothed into um, a ponytail at the back. So I'll just show you what I mean. So this section here, I'm going to put it into one braid and then we just have this here at the back that will be smoothed into the ponytail that I'm going to create for, uh, for, my, for my model that I have here with me. Okay, so I'm just sectioning out on both sides here. So again, you can just make it your own, find images of some looks that you like and then translate it into your own style so you don't have to imitate it to the exact of what it looks like but you can also just use it as a as a guiding point for your look that you want to create okay so again because we're now slicking the top the front part here we definitely want to make sure that we put enough glaze so the glaze also is used like i mentioned it's similar to like an edge control so if this was someone's actual head shape and someone's actual hair, I'll be able to leave out a little bit of their baby hairs because clients with Afro hair and curly hair, they tend to have a lot of baby hairs. So we use the edge control to slick down the edges and create a nice shape in there as well. So again, you just want to make sure you're using your product to help you with the styling that you're doing. The glaze helps us to set the hair in a position that is nice and smooth and sleek without any small bits of flyaways in there. And again, it also helps us to, to control the hair as well. So I'm just applying this all the way around. Again, most, mostly focusing towards the root area because the braid is going to be sitting on the root. So we want the, the hair that we see there, the base of this to be really slicked in nicely, okay? Okay, so I'll just braid this. So this is one that I'm going to add a little bit of extension as I go. So what I'll do is first, I'm going to start the braid without any extension, and then I'm going to start adding a little bit of the hair extension in there. So I just need to brush this out a little bit. So you want to make sure you're working with hair that's nice and smooth and it's not all tangled. So with the part of adding the small amount of hair extension as you go, you need to um, you need to section out small sections and then lay them to the side so that what you do is just pick them up as you go because you wouldn't be able to stop and then section out the hair and then plait. 
So I'm going to go in and section out about this amount of hair and I'm going to section out about uh, 10 of them. So I've just got um, a stew here just in front of me where I'm just placing these. So I just lay them on here. So I'm going to do um, 10 of them. So if I can just bring that so you can see there, that's where I'm just putting them. So you just want to lay them so that they're nicely prepared for you to just pick up and edge the hair. So this is called a uh, feeding braiding. So this method of feeding braiding enhances the look from starting off very narrow and goes a little bit wider. So that's another technique we use when we're adding hair extensions in there as well. So depending on the size that you want the plait to end up being, if I did more hair than this, it means that the plait is going to be really thick by the time it progresses to the to the point where it meets with the rest of the hair where I'm going to stop. But if I do this amount here, it's still going to be thick, but not extremely, okay? So again, when you're doing this method, keep in mind, you want to make sure that you're putting in an even amount of hair extension that you're going to be adding to the hair, okay? So I will start off with just braiding her own hair. So again, the braid is going to start off quite thin and narrow because of the way that I've sectioned the hair. I could have started from this point here, but it would have been thick and wide, but I don't want that look. So I want it nice and narrow where it starts. So I'm just going to cane this um, through here. Okay, time is really going. I'm like, am I going to do two looks at this point? But we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so I'm just going to cane or this so at this point I feel that I can start adding my hair extension from here so I just take the hair extension and then it's placed in between two of my sections and then one side goes to the to the right one goes to the section in the middle and then I pray I continue to braid that here so I'm slightly following the shape of the hairline that the training heads hairline is my guide but I'm going to slightly curve upwards so that goes up to meet up with the last line that we just did, the small one there. Okay, so I'll show you guys shortly, or hopefully you can see what I mean in terms of what I'm doing here. So we're gradually having a little bit of color going through the hair there, okay. All right, so my camera is getting a little bit more wider. The more extension I'm adding to the hair is creating a little bit more uh, wide shape to the end of that hair extension. So it slightly goes in down here along the hairline and then it gently curves upwards again, just following the direction of um, the training heads head shape. So keeping in mind that this is going to come up further up here because it's going to be set into a slightly low ponytail attachment. Okay. So when you're braiding with extension, you do need to put quite a lot of tension and you'll probably feel it in your fingers as I'm feeling it now because of the tension that we have to put in there. So I just got one more piece of extension to add to, to the hair. So that's kind of like how it looks there from the side. I'll just braid this in a little bit. So you have to maintain the tension all the way through. Otherwise, if you lose your tension, this part ten can tend to get very loose. 
So you just have to try your best to keep that tension going through the hair. All right, so I'll braid it out a little bit and then leave it there so that it doesn't actually fall out when I let go of it. Okay, so that's kind of like how it's looking. If I just move this up so you can see. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to the next side. So I'll do exactly the same thing I've just done on this side with the other side as well. Okay, so I'm putting my glaze all the way around the hairline, just like I did with the other side. And all along the, the perimeter of that section, focusing on the roots. If I turn it this way so you guys can see. Again, I need to just section out the hair that I need. Okay, I'm just going through the chat. I was just checking what you guys put in. So quite a few of you are in film and TV. If not everyone in here is in film and TV. Um, Yasmin, you said you're quite new to hairstyling. Okay, well, welcome to the world of hairstyling. <laughs> okay, um, let me just see what's going on with my, my camera there. All right, so I mean, everything that I'm covering, you guys will probably be able to relate because you're working in these industries where you're likely going to be styling the hair. Um, and most of the time, you're not really given a lot of time to prep your clients and do the hair with like, you know, or you, for most that I've worked with, they tend to tell me that you only get a few, maybe like 20 minutes or 30 minutes to do stuff with the hair. So you might not be given a lot of time. So. I mean, if you master how to braid very quickly, you'll be able to use braiding method to create all types of different looks in the hair that don't have to take you like hours and hours to do the hair. So, so yeah, if you've got any questions that you need to ask me regarding, if you, for the line of work that you're doing, just let me know. But I always try my best to relates to the different um, areas of work that you guys might work in. Although I've not personally worked in film and TV, so I can only relate more to working in the salon and just understanding how the hair works, the hair that we're working with, Afro hair texture. Uh, but in terms of timing wise, just like in the salon, you have to work very fast, but you have obviously a little bit more time than, you know, 20 minutes to style someone's hair. But um, with braiding and cane row, you can do them super fast, depending on the look that you're going for. And most of the time with Afro hair, you do need to do a lot of prep on the hair uh, before you do most of the natural stylings that we do. So it does require time. So wherever possible, you're able to prepare yourself and get the person to you well in advance before they're needed. That is definitely going to help you when it comes to do this styling. Okay, so we just, I'm just adding the hair here like I did on the other side again.
Okay, so again, I'm just following the, the shape of a hairline and then just curving upwards. So when it comes to braiding and you're trying to create slight curving or any patterns in the hair, it's all about how you position your body. So, and also the way you move your client. So whatever direction you're essentially braiding to, you want your body to put position in that direction as well. So like here, I'm braiding coming upwards. So my body naturally is going to stand more behind because I'm braiding towards where I'm standing. Essentially, that's going to direct where this is going to go. When I braid the ones coming down to the side here, I would stand to the side so that my body is facing the exact direction where the braiding is going. So that's just the way to remember that your positioning is going to determine how that plait is going to sit as well. So now I've got the two on both sides and I'll be doing the one right in the middle. And then I'll finish off by smoothing the back into the ponytail where I would also attach more hair extension because we don't have the length that is needed for the style to look how we want it to look. So I would have to add hair extension. So that's how it's looking right now towards the back. So these two, will come together with the rest of this hair, which will be joined in to create a ponytail here. And that's how it's looking from the left, the left side. And that's how it's looking on the right side there as well. Okay. So now we're going to go in and put in the section in the middle. So this will be the largest section. So remember when we're looking at some of the images, some of the braids were done with a slight pulling out just to enhance the shape so you could do that or you could just do it as a smooth braid like what we've done with the other ones it depends on the look that you're going for and the result that you want to see when the braiding is done as well so again you want to make sure that the hair is always brushed out when you're doing this on afro hair you definitely will find it much more easier to braid the hair when the hair has been blow dried you don't want to do the hair when it's um in its natural kinky texture because the hair shrinks a lot so it's not really giving you enough room to really comb through and stretch it out as much as you need it to be done so you're better off doing like a blow dry and smooth it out with a petted brush and then um, proceed to do any of your braiding on the hair so one thing i would say if you're going to blow dry afro hair or multi-textured hair so multi-textured hair is hair that is curly, the, the clients would have this a mixed descent. So anyone with mixed descent will normally refer to their hair as being multi-textured hair because they've got a combination of either Caucasian or Asian and a blend of Afro in the hair. So with those hair textures, you're better off blow drying the hair using uh, one of these. So you want to use a fork attachment. So this you can, I get, I got this one from PAX. So that's where I tend to order some of my tools from in terms of what I need for Afro hair texture. So this is called an Aphrodite uh, Afro Peak comb. And um, if you Google it, if you just Google, if you type in Afro Peak uh, attachment for blow drying, you will see something similar to this. So ideally this is what you want to be using when you're going to blow dry anyone with Afro hair. And then once you've finished using the fork attachment, then you can then smooth the hair with a padded brush. So you never want to just blow dry someone with afro hair uh, using your um, round brush or padded brush in its natural kinky texture. It's going to cause um, a lot of pulling on the hair. So you don't want you don't want to cause pain for the client by doing it that way. Okay. 
So that would be the best technique to use when you're doing your afro hair, blow drying. Okay. And now I'm just going to use this um, extra extension for the section here in the middle. So the section in the middle has to be a little bit more thicker than the other sections that we were just doing. So we are going to intentionally make this with a little bit more hair extension so we can see a bit more contrast and height to the section there in the middle. So again, I'm just going to section out pieces of hair that will be gradually adding into it. So these pieces are slightly uh, thicker than the one that I did before. So with this color, so a little bit more orange in there as the main color. And then again, a blend of four other colors mixed in with it as well. I hope you can all see the color nicely through my camera there. So you always comb through the hair. Comb it with a pedal brush. You can't just use any brush if you're brushing through your hair extension like I'm just doing here. You wanna use a pedal brush. Do not use a round brush because that hair is literally going to just wrap around the brush and it will be a tangled mess. You wouldn't be able to undo it. You'd have to throw away the brush and the hair if it gets to that point. So just be careful uh, what brushes you use. A tangled teaser brush is a good one for brushing through the hair as well. So if you have that, you could use a tangled teaser brush. Okay, so with this one here, again, it's not slightly starting off narrow like the other ones that we started off here, but it is going to be a little bit more thicker. So I'm just going to slightly braid it in a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to start adding hair. So I should have made this a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to separate that a little bit. So it's not too bulky and thick there in the front. Because the section is very wide, I'm going in with my comb to help me to do my section from one side to the other. So when you do the last section, just take your time with this so that it's not going to be a messy finish. Unless you want to intentionally finish it with more like a rough, messy look, then you can do that as well. So the way I position my hands where my fingers are nice and low to the scalp means I can drop some of the hair and have the risk of the hair coming undone completely. So the lower your hands are to the scalp when it comes to braiding, the more control you have of the hair that you're working with as well. So it's just another way to to make sure that your braid work is going to be really, really nice and firm and not too loose. OK, 
Okay, I think I'm going to do a slight pulling out on this hair. So I'm going to loosen it a little bit in terms of how I'm doing the hair because I know I want to go in and slightly pull on the hair extension a little bit. So it's, it just adds to the finish and the look as well. Okay. So this is the last bit of extension going in. It's kind of like how it's looking there from the back and from the side. So with the pulling out of the hair extension, you have to be very careful not to pull where the, the actual person's hair is, especially if they've got short hair. You don't want to pull it out and then have bits of hair kind of um, sticking out. So I'm just going over it and checking exactly where I'm pulling right now is only the extension because the extension is long enough to pull out without running the risk of having extra hair kind of sticking out. So this process you want to take your time with. Um, so I'll just go in further down the plait there. And then as it loosens a little bit more lower to the plait, it means when I get a little bit more higher up here, I'm able to pull out a little bit more without any of the hair resisting, which can also add a problem if the hair is too tight and it's not really loosening the way that you want it to. That's kind of like how it's looking there in the back. So I just go over it and then just slightly pull out some of the, the strands. So you kind of pinch it right on the very edges of the section of the braid and then you just slightly pull it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, 
join up the hair in the back to the point where I actually want to have the ponytail attachment starting. So I'm going to intentionally leave this a little bit more loose and then I'll join it after. So with this one here, I need to slick this hair into a bun first. So I will be using, um, again, the edge control to help to slick the hair down. So now I'm using my Kerake edge control for this part here. I'll just slick the hair up because I'm going to be applying a little bit of um, the hair gel. So if you're going to use hair gel on Afro hair, I would recommend you use the glaze first. So the glaze is essentially going to create like a barrier between the edge control and the gel so that the gel doesn't cause the hair to revert back when it sits on the hair. So with the glaze, it just helps to get that hair nice and smooth and position it in place where you want it. And then you can then go in with your um, with your gel after. And if you wanted to use like hairspray on the hair after, then you can also use that to just give you an extra hold on the hair as well. That can also work. So this just helps to get that hair nice and smooth in the back and a little bit more sleek as well. It might look shiny when it's initially on there, but once it dries in, it does dry with more like a matte finish instead of like a very super shiny finish. And then if you want any shine, you just smooth over. If you have like a pomade that you can use to just smooth over the hair to just add a little bit of shine to it, then you can do that. Okay. All right, so what I use for my, my hair, when I'm putting into a ponytail, I actually use this uh, nylon thread, the nylon, uh, it says polyester. Okay, it's not nylon. So it's polyester. So this is a thread that we use for like weaving. So with the thread, I use it to actually tie the hair because I find this is much more easier for me to really get a nice tight grip on my hair, especially if I'm smoothing the hair into like a ponytail or I'm going to attach um, some hair to it as well. I would prefer to use this than to use, um, I know there's other methods you might use like the bungee or you might use the, the using your hair grips on a hair band to tie the hair. That's an option. But I've just always used this method for quite a while now. So this is like my go-to way of tying the hair. Okay. So I'm just going to position this in exactly where I want this to be. And then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and tie this. So normally I will do a bun that kind of covers all the hair. So with this, it's only a very small amount, so it shouldn't be too difficult to do. So what I do is I just take this thread and I'll literally wrap it around. But the trick is to make sure that you have enough tension and grip. So normally you'd want someone to pull the opposite side of the thread that you're not threading around the head because the more they pull in the opposite direction and the more you pull in the other direction, it makes it nice and tight and gives it a really, really good hold on the hair. So sometimes it's a bit tricky trying to do it yourself without someone to hold the other side. But normally I would either get my model or the client, whoever I'm doing their hair, to pull on one side as I tie the hair down on the other. Okay, so this is all tied in. Then you just knot this to just hold that in place. So that's all smooth and tied into there. Okay. But I'm mindful of the time. So what I'm going to do is I'll join these into here with the other one. So I might use, um, if I have it, if I have them with me, if I have them. So I might use my elastic bands. I've got some white elastic bands here. So they're the small elastic rubber bands that I'm using. So I'm just using this to tie this in. So already I've got um, the hair holding anyway, so I'm not too worried about the elastic band. I just needed to position the hair extension in there. And what I'm going to do is 
this hair because it doesn't really blend with the rest of the hair that we have on here. I'm actually just going to braid this down. So this is just the training heads hair that I'm just braiding down out of the way because I know I'm wrapping this in extension anyway. So you won't really be needed to be out. So I'm just going to wrap this here around. Then I'll put another elastic band on there just to hold that hair in place so it doesn't come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, so this hair extension here is going to be added to create the ponytail that I want to do on here. Normally I might either, I would use my straightness to actually smooth over this hair extension because the hair extension can get a little bit kind of, um, what way am I looking for? Like a kind of like bushy type of effect instead of being more slick. <laughs> I'll use that term. Uh, but to get it really, really slick, sometimes I would get my straighteners on like uh, 110 degrees and then just smooth that over the hair to just get a more like a slicker finish. Keeping in mind, this is actually synthetic hair. So if your straighteners are too hot, you will bend the hair. So you want to test out first. So normally I would put my straighteners on like 180 or something. Sorry, um, 80 degrees, should I say, not 180. And then I will test to see how the heat feels. And then if it's looking like it's not melting on the head, then I would go in and um, do that with maybe a little bit more for higher heat. So all I did was I just put my elastic band to just join the hair there in the middle. So you want an elastic band that won't snap like what mine are doing. I'm hoping if I try maybe two, it should hold, hopefully. So I just bring them in the middle here and then join them together over the hair. So this is just going to be helping me to place the hair where I need it to be, which is over the sections here. So once this is over the hair, I'm just going to take a small section of that hair extension, which I'm going to use to wrap around on the hair to cover up where I'm creating the ponytail. And the rest of the hair will be blended in to cover up where that hair extension will sit. So I'm just taking out so this is from the two lines that we did with the hair extension on the side there. So I'm just taking those out to blend in with the rest of the hair that I've just added to this training head here. And I'm going to use this hair to wrap it around so i'm just wrapping it around to finish off the tying there and to cover up where the hair is joined together here again be careful with this hair it tends to tangle up quite a bit sometimes if you don't prepare it properly or if you don't section it out as you're working with it, that can also happen. I'm just taking a little bit of some of the hair and just wrapping it around to knot that in so I don't actually have to knot it down or anything I will just take little bits of hair extension and keep wrapping it around to 
get it to hold. And what I'll do is I'll just lightly brush this. And what I might do is I would probably set this in hot water to make curly or I could leave this as it is where it's all straight like that. So on the effect and the result that you want to see in the hair. So I'm just taking this extra hair here and just tying some of it over like what I just initially just did with the section of the hair when I added to it. So that just places the middle plait in with the hair. And I've intentionally left out some of the other hair there on the side out instead of tying it in with the rest of the hair. So that's how it's looking there in the back. Um, so I do want to really finish this and accessorize this and time is flying. So we might not have time for two looks at this point. But if I do another look, I will just do it and then I'll edit to this video if I don't do the second one. Because I want to show you guys how to set this in hot water and then finish that slightly curled on the hair there. So this is kind of like how it's looking so far in the hair. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, set some of this hair. So if you wanted to get the hair curly, you could do that by wrapping it in hot water. So dipping it in hot water. So what I'm going to do is I've got these uh, curly bendy rollers they're like the foam ones the squeegee one the foam one that you can just bend in so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this hair so it's not all your hair extensions that you can actually do this with but with the expression hair the synthetic hair we're able to actually to do that so what i'm going to do is um let me put the kettle on so you do need to use really hot water so i'm actually going to put the kettle on so i can boil the water for this So while that's on, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly set this. So you can choose what size you want to do this in, but just be careful to always brush through the hair a little bit. So it's not all tangled in. And all you're going to do is to literally just wrap it around like you do when you're setting hair. I'm just going to, I'm not going to do these very small, but I'm not going to do them super large either. So if you braid someone with hair extension, say use this one, we, the way we seal the ends so they don't come undone and they just add to the finish of the hair is to dip the hair in um, hot water and that helps to set the hair. It, the water can be, sometimes boiling water it can be a bit too hot for the hair. So sometimes what I do is I will mix it in with a little bit of cold water if I feel like it's really, really hot. But um, by the way, you do want it to be hot when you do that.
If you do this on someone's actual head, you want to leave room so that they can lean back and you're not getting too close to the scalp with hot water when you do the dipping in. Uh, I'm going to be using like a plastic bowl to dip the hair into with the water. So we don't actually pour it over because accidents will be waiting to happen if you use that method. So just or usually I either use like a jug, like a plastic jug that I can hold to do that, but I couldn't find the one that I normally use. So I'm using like a plastic bowl that I have. Right, okay, so I'm, I'm just taking this off so I can show you how that looks. So that's all set in there. So we literally just dip that in for about maybe 30 seconds or so. And then um, it should be nice and ready and curly instantly so the water is done i'm just going to grab that right now So I've got my hot water in here. It's very hot, so I have to make sure I don't burn myself. Um, you also want to make sure that you have like towels. You want a towel at hand, if one or two, to catch all the water once you lift this out. So be very careful when you do this. Okay. Um, so because this is a training head, I can get away with doing it this way. But on someone's actual head, you would get them to lean all the way back like that. And then you've got the hair just falling underneath here. And then you place the hair one by one. So you would take one part of the, the flexi rod and then you dip it in the hot water. Okay. So you do it as slowly as you can. So with this one, I can just take it and then place it underneath here. And then I'm just gently pushing the hair in to make sure all the hair is immersed in the water, as you can see there. So it has to hold and stay in there for at least um, 30 seconds. If the water is very, very hot, then even like 20 seconds, then it's already done. I should probably use a towel for this underneath it. Okay, so I did do this slightly thicker, so I'm just leaving it in for a little bit more time just to make sure it's actually done.
and then we'll just towel dry that water up a little bit. So sometimes I might use my blow dryer on the hair a little bit to get rid of some of the water, but it's not all the time that I always have to do that. So it depends on how thick the hair is so it catches more water. this hot water away. Right, okay, so you can straight away take it out. It should be set and ready to come out. It will still be slightly wet. So it usually takes about an hour or so to really dry if you don't blow dry it. Um, but you, if you got like, cause my, these are like um, disposable towels so they don't actually catch all the water. So if you have like proper towel, then it's going to probably soak up the water quite quickly. So all I'm just doing is to just undo the hair now. So it's not a tight curl because of the size of the, the roads that I was using. They're a little bit thick, so it's like a loose wave going through the hair there, but you'll be able to see it. Okay. So you can do this slightly smaller if you want to have more like a tighter curl on the hair when it's taken out. So this is kind of like the curl that we have there. So what we can do is I can just gently brush it out a little bit. So ideally, we would want this to really dry into the hair, like the hair to completely dry. Because when the hair dries, you're able to style it out a little bit more instead of when it's still a little bit wet. So to quicken the process, you could get, um, you can even use a diffuser on like medium heat, not too close to the hair, and then just diffuse some of the water out from the hair. Or most of the time we just leave it to just dry by itself anyway. So I'm just sectioning out the curls to loosen it out a little bit and essentially creating more like a fuller Kind of messy look so when this dries then it will look even more fuller than what it looks like right now So if you wanted to do like any brushing out, you'd probably want to wait until the hair is completely dry before you brush out any of the hair to make it a little bit more fuller. So this is quite long in terms of the length there. So I'm just going to go around and just trim off the very edges of this hair just to neaten it a little bit more on there. I can cut into a little bit and create a little bit of layering 
in the hair as well. So the cutting you do, you, similar to like freehand cutting for curly hair, not to make it too blunt while you're doing your cutting. So that's kind of like how it's looking there from the front. So what I might do is when it dries, I would go in and put um, some hairspray in there. So I've got this uh, Goldwell Super Firm Mega Hold hairspray, which I can spray into the hair to have a little bit more volume in there and then spray and then crunch it and have a little bit more height and volume in there. I'm just scrunching and pulling slightly just to have a little bit more volume in the hair. So with your expression hair, you can do quite, quite a bit with it. If you want to have curls, you can. It's just the case of setting it. Choose the size of the curl that you want to work with and then you set it and then you should be able to have curls in the hair. Might do a slight back combing on the hair because I do want to see a little bit more of the hair. Well, if I'm looking at it from the front, we want to be able to see a little bit of that hair coming through there on the front sides as well. So I'm going to use um, one of my slightly larger cutting comb and just gently back comb into the hair a little bit. So be mindful that once you start to backcomb this hair, you can't really undo the backcombing that you would have done because this is synthetic hair extension. Um, once it kind of tangles in, that's it. So whatever you do with it, that's the state is going to stay. In. So you can't actually go back and then try and comb it out to get it straight again. You wouldn't be able to do that with this hair here. All right, so that's how this is looking. Just show you that from, that's the back of the hair. So that's the curl that we have going through there. So the hair is quite long, you're just not able to see. So if I stand back a little bit more, so you're able to kind of see it. So that's how it's looking there in the back on the side, just like that. And what we could do is if we wanted to maybe add some accessories to this as well. I will see what I have in my box of accessories. I have, I tend to collect quite a lot of things. I don't even know where I got these. These are some kind of, I think they're like the kebab sticks. You know, like when you're making like a homemade kebab uh, with like the peppers and the meat or whatever. I think that's what these are. Um, I put them in there because I thought maybe I might use them. I also have these um, large belt buckles that I got from a haberdashery in North London. Um, so I think I've got about 200 of these, <laughs> which are waiting to be used. And I've got these other ones. These are actually like, is actually a belt buckle. You can actually see the little thing there in the middle. Um, again, from the same haberdashery, which um, I've not, I don't know, I've not used those ones, but I have other bits and pieces. So this I have, um, I don't know, um, where did I get this from? I think my sister gave this to me, so I, I, I don't even know where she got it from. They're kind of like, I think they're like paper clips with a, that kind of design on them. So with these, I could just slide them in somehow into this hair to 
work as an accessory. I've never actually used these, so I don't even know how I could place them in here, but I think they're holding and working. So we can just play around with different ways to accessories, to accessorize, should I say, the hair. Um, so these, I think I've got five of these. So if I place these on either side of her head, already that's adding a whole different look to the style as well. So it's always good to shop around for different things. Sometimes I buy stuff and I keep it for years before I use it. I buy stuff like this, knowing that I'm going to, um, knowing that I'm going to possibly use it at some point. You know, some stuff I've had for like four or five years and I've not used, but I know eventually an idea will spring to mind and be like, oh, okay, I could, I could use that instead of that. So, and this, this is just like um, some earring that I, I found or I got, because personally I don't wear them, but I tend to collect like um, jewelry pieces that I would actually use for accessorizing my my heads when I do different styles on them. So again, that just adds a little bit of a different look to the style there. But again, it's just about playing around with accessories and the positioning of the hair and taking something that is quite a simple and straightforward look such as braid work and then transitioning into something more editorial, something that we could possibly see on camera, see in the magazines, on the catwalks. And I, I do like how this is looking. I hope it's looking as good to you guys on camera as it is to me in person. I could just be like the only one like liking this. But um, yeah, time, okay. I can't do a complete look, a second look in like 20 minutes. So we'll have to leave it with just this one look. And chances are I might do something live on my Instagram anyway. So with my, um, with Instagram, I haven't done something on there for a while. So chances are I might do um, another second look relation to this particular method of styling uh, at some point. So I want to say specifically what day I'm going to do that on because uh, my schedule is a bit crazy right now but I will do something again soon in the coming weeks, hopefully. But this is the look and that's how it looks at the back. So it's already starting to dry. It's not actually super wet. It's more slightly wet around the ends here, but it already feels dry in the hair. But I do like the curl that we got from um, setting it in the hot water there. And if I bring that up close, you can see from the sides there, that's how it's looking. And that's the front there. And that's the other side. And that's where we attach the ponytail. I left out a little bit of the hair on the side there. Okay. And a little bit on there as well. So what do you guys think? Thank you for making the time as always. And I am going to leave you here and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, whatever you're doing. Okay, bye.